Hey yeah, fools, Big T here and I'm back with another video and in this video I'm just going to show you guys how it is that I hook up all my game consoles at once. Well it's not like I do it all at once but in a way uh, they're all pretty much the ones I want to play uh, for the most part are all on the ready. Now outside of like Super Nintendo uh, which I don't have on the ready and uh, my NES, which I don't have on the ready as well, uh, I can get along without having those because of those wonderful little mini consoles, the, the SNES Classic Mini and the uh, NES Classic Mini. Um, I do have mine modded, so pretty much every game that I wanna play is on those consoles, on those mini consoles, and I can just uh, play it there. And it, you know, it feels like having the original hardware obviously you're not using cartridges um, but it feels like having the original hardware because um, you do get the NES controller that feels very authentic obviously it's a little different as far as the input and you also get a Super Nintendo controller which uh, again feels very authentic so that is awesome and uh, come to think of it I wonder if I could uh, if I could find a way to uh, hook these up to no, probably not. I don't think so. I don't think there's any way yet to hook these up to switch in any kind of way. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and look at what I got here. So um, these are pretty cheap. I bought these uh, basically splitters, HDMI splitters uh, on eBay, um, you know, with varying results because <laughs> some of them work. Uh, most of them worked when I bought them. But the like they're really cheap, so even if you're making a gamble, uh, for the most part it works. Um, so you have these three inputs here, and you have uh, the one, the main input, uh, which goes uh, out to your television. Um, so you can do it. Uh, you can basically send that out to even another splitter and have more, um, which um, I tried to do at first, but one of the splitters just stopped working. So I don't know if that was uh, over, uh, I don't know if that was because um, it was uh, overused and somehow it shorted out or something like that. That's very possible. Uh, but um, as you can see, I have all my HDMI's here labeled. So even if I just use the one splitter, um, I kind of taped them together so they don't, not all over the place so I can keep it somewhat neat and I can just plug them in as I want to. And it's easy to do that because, like I said, I have these very simple labels that I, I just wrote down on pieces of paper. I do have a, a little labeler, uh, but um, I ran out of, uh, it wasn't ink, I think it was the little paper and it was hard to find because it's kind of old. But um, you can just make your own little label yourself, no big deal, and uh, slap it on yourself. You can tape it or you can buy like adhesive little paper or whatever. And uh, there you go. I have all these hooked up together, uh, basically, and this actually runs runs into the uh, the uh, the Elgato HD capture device uh, that runs to the TV, and it also runs to either my desktop or my laptop. So, because I, I have the software on both, uh, depending on how I want to capture it, and that makes it very convenient because I can just easily capture anything I want. Now, obviously, you have the problem with. Uh, certain consoles not having HDMI and you can go the really expensive frame Meister route um, or not Fighting Vipers. Ha <laughs> 
Um, I, I like the authentic signal, so what I'll do uh, sometimes is I'll split it and I'll have uh, the Elgato SD capture uh, and I'll just use the regular AB cables into that and then run that out into my, uh, you know, my capture device uh, that I record onto uh, my computer, my laptop, or again, my desktop, and I can just sit here and play it on the, you know, on my um, uh, cathode ray TV, my CRT, just like I did back in the 90s. And so I can capture it still and get a pretty authentic signal and play uh, the, the game the way it was intended to look and not try to stretch it out or do something weird on my, uh, on my, um, on my HD TV and, you know, and have some kind of weird input or it's just it's not going to have the same quality um, but you know if it doesn't bother you as much you can adjust your TV uh, settings to make the picture look better and uh, even tolerable and if you just want to you know run that HD capture that way you can also do that so um, instead of buying the expensive frame meister I do plan on uh, what do you call it uh, modding my N64 at least um, and getting uh, you know the HDMI out for that. Uh, not the GameCube because I can take those GameCube games, play them on my Wii, and I do have an HDMI uh, uh, HDMI uh, not device, but uh, what do you call it? adapter uh, from the Wii, so I can play most of my GameCube games uh, through my Wii and have a nice clean output, and then utilize HDMI, so I don't have to worry about any kind of weird uh you know any any weird like artifacting or anything weird from having some kind of kind of cheap uh adapter or converter or something like that and so but yeah um for actually for my sega saturn i don't mind i use the converter for that i have uh a scart to hdmi that seems to work okay it does do some kind of bordering uh issues here and there uh, but for the most part, it looks fine. Um, like, but if you're, if you're a stickler for the best signal and stuff, this is not the way to go. The way to go is Frame Meisters, or there's other uh, kind of higher end devices out there for converting. Uh, but for me, this is just fine. So I'm able to have my uh, Xbox 360, my original Xbox, uh, and my Xbox One. I have my GameCube, uh, my Wii. And I mostly use the GameCube for my GBA, uh, my Game Boy Player, uh, so I can play stuff there. Uh, that's why you know I usually use that for, because I play my, like I said, I play my GameCube games on my Wii. That way I can use the HDMI out from my Wii, and uh, so that works really well. I also have my PS4, my PS3 hooked up. Um, I don't have PS2 hooked up. Um, I'm probably just going to uh, you know, 
find the you know the whatever I can do for converting or whatever the best way and do that or um, uh, utilize my PS3 backwards compatibility but the problem is my the video went out on my PS3 recently my backwards compatible one and so I mean I know how to fix it it's just you know I don't I haven't felt like going in opening up and uh, doing the uh, the reflow on it and resoldering uh, but I will do that at some point because uh, it's worth it to me and so like I said yeah my PS3 is hooked up uh, what else do I have I have my N64 that is also through SCART to HDMI and that works really well and uh, when it comes to PS3 or PS yeah PS3 PS4 and Xbox one um, they have the lockout um, to where you can't capture uh, I think that re they recently updated, I don't want to say recently, probably within a year or so, they updated it to where you can capture without doing some tricky stuff using a splitter. But um, I still utilize the splitter because um, it's just, you know, more convenient and I can uh, put my, H my Xbox One and my uh, PS4 through that. Um, <clears throat> and I can still, I could capture if I want to, uh, especially if I'm going to be doing movie reviews and stuff. I can capture from Netflix and all that stuff, just clips. I'm not gonna like burn the whole movies and make them, you know, and sell uh, bootlegs or anything. But just for, uh, like I said, just for reviewing and stuff, it's cool to be able to just capture that. Because usually when you turn on Netflix or you turn on the Blu ray player or something like that, um, your uh, capture device will, or your, your console just won't work because uh, it knows you're trying to capture, uh, you know, basically copyrighted content um but it's fair use if you you know if you show it in certain ways you link the clips and stuff like that so um it's really convenient so I, that's why i have the splitter and that's why i utilize the splitter uh so i can capture that content so that's all good and uh yeah i have dreamcast down here which is uh, uh i utilize a uh, what's the, I forget what it's called. I'll put the name of it on the screen. Uh, I, uh, so that's, you know, converted to HDMI output. But the problem with that is that I've been finding, I don't know if it's just the cable or not, but there's some weird, um, weird issues every once in a while where the image will stutter and just freeze. The game will still be playing, but it doesn't seem to like the HDMI output. Some games will just not even run after a while. Um, they'll just, you know, you hear the disc spinning, uh, but it'll keep loading and it just won't work. Like Shinmu, uh, once you try to leave, like, once you try to go into the town and whatnot, you leave your house, uh, or even just leaving the house sometimes, it'll just keep loading and loading. It will not go uh, to the outs exterior. So um, there's some weird thing, the Dreamcast, where it doesn't want you to display certain displays, uh, you know, trying to put an HD, HD signal out really messes with the ability uh, to play a lot of different games. Some games will work fine, but a lot of them won't. It works. So I got to check and see if I can find another kind of cable that'll uh, allow me to do that. So yeah, I mean, this is very cool that I'm able to have all this. Obviously my switch is hooked up as well to that. And I can just quote unquote switch <laughs> uh, the HDMI cable and it's, it's really convenient. And I, I run my PC as well to my TV. So um, yeah, I have that label for that HDMI. And, you know, like I said, they're not all hooked up at once. But if I want to utilize them, they're mostly all plugged in. And I have a uh, uh, power converter that I just switch on and off uh, when I want to use those. Um, so I don't have an issue with that. I just have to worry about the HDMI plugging in. And it's very simple. Um, it looks a little wiry over here. It looks a little like uh, the set of the Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> from from uh, from on the Matrix with all the wires and stuff. But um, you know, it's it's pretty convenient, and uh, it's really cool to be able to have all my systems hooked up and not have to put them in a closet or you know, if I want to play my favorite game console of all time, my my uh, N64. If I want to play Sega Saturn games. I can easily do that and it's very convenient and I don't have to do anything crazy 
and it's just really nice and convenient to do so. Now, what happens is, <laughs> like, I have so much to play and so many options, I'll sit around and like, okay, what am I going to play? What system am I going to play? What game am I going to play? I'll sit around for like 40 minutes sometimes trying to figure out what to play to a point where I get, you know, frustrated and I just kind of give up and just watch, you know, Netflix or YouTube or something. <laughs> so that's my only issue with that stuff. But, but like I said, it's very convenient to be able to play all this stuff and have it all hooked up and it's just great so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh let me know what you think uh do you think you know would you like to be able to have you know, all your game systems consoles at the ready or are you fine with putting them away and, and focus us on focusing on whatever new is out there right now obviously switch and uh xbox one ps4 uh your pc or whatever it's all that takes up more of your time you don't really care about the older systems as much maybe once in a while you'll break them out but i i just like having it out and ready to go if i feel like playing an old you know old school game or something like that and my favorite consoles you know i play regularly on those things uh to this day so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments below thank you for watching listening and i'll see you from next time peace out